<laughs> All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so t tell me about tell <laughs> tell me about those drone plans. Well, late uh, you know uh, a few nights ago or about a week ago, I, I went outside at about you know going on eleven o'clock, ten o'clock, and uh, you know I I went out for a smoke and uh, I, I I looked up in the sky and I was looking at the stars and. Then I saw these drones, like satellites, that were, you know, circular, and they were circling slowly across uh, my neighbor's barn area and circling over my house slowly. And you know, it was just it was one of them. And it kept circling, you know, for probably a good half an hour. I was watching it, kind of almost like a loony, just as it as it was circling uh, back and forth, and then it would go halfway between the uh, barn house and my house and then it would stop like it would you know it, it would come to a point where it just it would blink with red on it and then it just it got to the point where I, I mean I got tired of looking at it and that's when uh, also I you know went back outside uh, for another smoke and then heard a loud bang like almost like a car crash but like it, it had to be fence or something but I don't know where the bang had come from, you know, uh, just, you know, weird coincidences and like people like constantly throughout my day, I mean, I have an anxiety or phobia disorder and like throughout my day, like all day, I get mimicked from the, the stuff that I say subconsciously before it comes out, it's read like a book. And whether I like it or not, uh, you know, and, and, and there's nothing to say. They put stuff like in my subconscious to like, oh, you're a pervert, you're, you're, uh, you know, uh, a molester, you're, you know, you're, you're doing this wrong or that wrong. But like, they before I say something, I'll say it, but they'll say it ahead of me as I'm saying it. And I know I'm not schizophrenic, I know I'm not psycho. And, uh, you know, they they just, they make me grow up and say whatever I say, wherever I go. Like when I'm going to the bathroom, they'll say, oh, he's disgusting, he's finally using the bathroom. Or I'll go to the shower, you know, like, yeah, he's showering, yeah, he's doing real good, oh, he's filthy. And it just, it drags on, man, it carries up through the day to the point where, like, I also try to not talk back to it, uh, the B2K or whatever the hell they're using on me. Uh -huh. But it gets to the point, yeah, man, it gets to the point where I start, I start actually talking back. And sometimes, like, it's really not me, but I come off rude and I'll say nasty stuff. Like, to them, like you know, like if I find you, like, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be the crap, the crap out of you. Or like, I'm gonna hurt you, just foul stuff. But if the more foul stuff I say, the more negative stuff comes back to me. Well, wait, can you can you explain that? Like, you're going through gang stalking, and what you're saying is, is there's technology available to put thoughts into your consciousness. Like when I'm talking to you on the phone, people have the ability to enter thoughts into your consciousness to make you hear what they're saying. That's what you're saying. Yeah, to make them. Uh, yeah, they. Yeah, they put words in, in my head. One, if I don't put words in, like if I'm not self-consciously, if I'm not like thinking, you know, they'll put stuff in my head like, oh, you know, he's racist, or like you're perverted, or you know, uh, you're uh, you're a pill shopper, or just like just negative stuff. But then, like when I start thinking with my own, like when I just start thinking and and you know, like reading a book or, you know, going uh, out or skateboarding like in my self-conscious, they'll, right before I say it, it's the weirdest shit, dude. They'll, they'll know what I'm saying and as I'm saying it, they'll be saying it as well. You know, they exact words. And it gets to the point that it, it gets so frustrating because nobody believes you. But, you know, I mean, I've talked to my family and they're starting to understand it a bit better. I, you know, I was, like I was telling you before, I spoke to somebody who was saying the same thing. I had somebody else email me, <clears throat> give me their phone number, and I called them, and they were experiencing the same thing, where they said there's a technology available 
where the, the, the person using the technology is able to implement thoughts into somebody's mind. Like, just like, just like they're answering, just like you're answering the telephone you're with your consciousness. Then on MSNBC, there was a video where it was all over California how they were saying um, people were, were hearing voices that were being gang stalked. Did you remember I, you saw that link? Did you, you saw yeah, that? Yeah, I actually saw it. It was, uh, it was about a few, uh, six or so uh, gay guys. Right. And, uh, they were being harassed, but along with that, another hundred people. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm surprised nothing uh, happened out of it. Right, yeah. right. experience things like uh, people parked on the corner from your house, cars parked on the corner from you? Have you experienced stuff like that? Attempted to like wave at the people, like to 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 be friendly with them. Um. Yeah. Well, on, on occasion, like when I've been out skateboarding, uh, I've uh, you know, since I'm agoraphobia, I don't get out as much. I'm more of a homebody. But as I've skateboarded, I mean, I've waved, but all of them are on their, I mean, half of them are on their cell phones, like kind of you know not looking at me at all. But like sometimes you know I'll get waves and you know whatnot. But it's just. I mean, there's, you know what, man, there's coincidences, and then there's shit that's just not paranoia, it's just stuff that adds up that doesn't make sense, like, constantly being cut off, or going in to buy, uh, you know, cigarettes, or water, or something to eat or drink, and then, like, there'll be a, a guy selling, like, uh, over the counter, like, illegally, a pipe, and then, like, being, like, telling us, oh, and this, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that,
know he's going to be gone for us. And I'm like, okay, this isn't stalking. I don't know what it is, you know. I uh, See, the, the experiences I've had have been kind of similar to yours, just a little different. Um, see, the thing about me is I'm, I don't, I don't, I have very little fear of the people around me. Like, I go to, I go everywhere. I go to really nice areas, and I wave and talk to the police. Um, I go to the hood, you know, and walk walk around by myself and wave and talk to people, wave and talk to the police, wave and talk to new people. Um, I'm, I'm just very social, and one thing I noticed is they, they've had a tendency to not know how to deal with that. It seems like when I'm out and about, they become, they become uh, I don't know, they become like um, unaffected. Uh, the way I approach or the way I talk to people, they don't seem to have that strong of a pull um, over society. Like with me, with me, I seem to have a stronger pull into society than the gang stalking program does. And it wasn't like that at first, but it's like that now. And that seems to be something, you know, I, I pushed, I kept pushing through that fear. I kept waving at people. I kept talking to people. Um, I, okay. I kept, that was my mother. I kept, I keep interacting with people and they seem to have lost their uh, pull, and I'm wondering if that could be possible for you. Like, if you start interacting with these people more, will that change? You know, I, I think it might, but, uh, like, where, wherever I go, man, uh, there's, there's people wherever I go, it's like they, they kind of, like, rubber and look at me, which is the right. I mean, they can do that, but... Everywhere I go, uh, there's always somebody that is like is staring at me, like making like assumptions, like giving me like you know just kind of a dirty look, which is all right. But I mean, when it happens all the time, you kind of pick up on it, you know, the uh, coincidences. And I mean, I have not tried walking around and you know waving and saying hi to everybody. Uh, you know, like when I get out, I try to tend to mind my own business, but then it seems that I, you, you know everybody else. You know what, man? I talked to a seasoned FBI agent one time on a Greyhound bus, and um, he said he had been retired. He was a, he was he was like in his you know late forties, early fifties, and he told me there's no such thing as coincidences. He said if I ever see something, and it seems to be coincidence, he said it's never coincidence. Not one, not no matter what it is, not one time is anything coincidence. I mean that's what he told me, and you know he he's I think he worked on a lot of bank robberies and. Um, you know, a lot of cases involving, uh, you know, he dealt with high-profile criminals working on the FBI, and he said there's never one thing as a coincidence. When you first see something, pay pay close attention, pay attention to detail, and identify it, and and you know, go from there. He said don't let he said don't let a coincidence something fool you as being presented as a coincidence. Have you ever heard that? No, I have never heard that, but that that's kind of what I've been doing. You know, not out of paranoia, but out of uh... You know, you kind of, as you grow up, you kind of learn how to be street smart, you know, and you kind of notice stuff, you know, mm-hmm. that, uh, that appears, uh, you know, you get cut off once, and you get cut off, you know, three times once when you're driving, and then, like, people slowing down on you when you're driving, or, you know, looking at you weird, or, like, as I'm driving, I, I hear the electronic, like, harassment, like, uh, you know, he's just like, oh, he's just like, oh, he's turning here, like, uh, like knowing, like, I'm being involved. But the weird thing is, my mother can't hear it, but I know in my mind that I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not schizophrenic. I'm not, I'm not labeled any of that. I mean, I've been to the doctors, but all the doctors have done is prescribe me several pills to take for this. They have not admitted to gang stalking being real. Now you you said you were prescribed to to like um seven different drugs by the doctor. Seven different drugs, yeah. Put on I was put on I put on lithium, Depakote, uh, Depakote, Seroquel, uh, beta blockers, and clonazepam, uh, three milligrams, and uh, to help me with these voices that are clearly. Uh, Right. <laughs> right, right. They're 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 applying the they're rec- they're they're prescribing you with this medicine as if this is some sort of issue within yourself. Like it, it's some sort of um you know, d- chemical 
imbalance or disorder that you have, when in reality, these voices are coming from the gang stalking program, and it's being used, there's technology being used to be able to do it. Then you said that you went and spoke to a therapist, and she would make you look into her eyes, and you had to tell her that the gang stalking wasn't real. Exactly. Uh, what happened was I, 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 I tripped out about it. She said, you know, I, I looked into it, and it, it's not real. And she's like, you got to trust me on this. And even when I call her when uh, in, a, in a panic, uh, she's like, you got to remember it's not real. And before I left the office this last time, I have to go to this office tomorrow uh, speaking, which, which is going to be, uh, you know, a, a different kind of talk. I'm going to try and get off these things. But yeah, before I left the office, uh, she said, uh, I looked her, she kept saying it wasn't real. She's like, you trust me? And you trust me? And then I knew I didn't trust her, but I mean, I looked her right in the eyes because she kept saying it wasn't real. And I said to her, yeah, I believe you. But in my heart, I didn't know. I didn't believe it. Well, well, the thing, the thing, the thing that, um... She thinks it's a fantasy. She thinks it's, it's, it's completely impossible. The reason why I'm confused about her response uh, as a therapist, doesn't she know that the Department of Justice, which is a, which is the federal government, already admitted that gang stalking is real? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. Uh, to be honest, if it makes me uh, kind of angry, uh, she she thinks it's she's looked into it, and she thinks it's it's only a conspiracy, and she says you have to trust me on this, or you can end up in the mental hospital ward. Uh, that it is not real. So she, so she, so she doesn't believe the United States government. Basically, is what I mean. If well, I, the thing that bothers me too is she's had over ten years of practice to become a psychiatrist or a therapist, right? Right. And she's really, she's really smart, but she doesn't. She says it's it's not real, and she has a computer sitting right by her. And uh, I, I told her, can you look into it? And she's like, I've already looked into it. It's not, it's not real. The, I mean, the for, the former head of the Los Angeles FBI, Ted Gunderson, he was the head of the FBI for, like, over 20 years. He was a personal friend of, of Ronald Reagan at one time. He said he had been gang... He, 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 he talked about how he had been gang stuck, and he explained it, and he had, and he talked it out, and everything he said was completely accurate with everything I've experienced. And so I'm just... I, I just get confused. It's like the United States government says gang stalking is real, the guy who was the head of Los Angeles FBI for 20 years actually got gang stalked himself and said it's real. And people are still walking around talking about that. It's a, it's like a theory or it's a conspiracy theory. It doesn't make sense. It's like when you have your own government telling you it's real, what, what more what more do you need? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean how can you fight that? But I, I don't know if she just hasn't looked that far into it. But I even talked to my doctor and he said, look, that is impossible. It's like we live in a new generation. And he's like, oh, I even play, uh, you know, video games myself. And, uh, you know, he's kind of a home buddy or whatever. He works two days uh, out of the week on a shift. Anyways, he says the only way for anybody to read any kind of pulse in our mind would be to have um, actual wires stuck to your head. And that's the only way that somebody could actually electronically twerk or, you know, uh, do anything to you. No, 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 the, the central, there was a congressional hearing back in the 1970s where I don't know who the director was at the, it was a, there was a couple of directors in the 70s, but they had, they had called the director of the central intelligence agency actually admitted that they had that technology, that they could influence, under the MK Ultra program, and this was the, this was the United States government who, who, the congressional hearing, the United States government asked, asked them, and they admitted, they said, yeah, we, we do that, we got that, we experimented with that, but guess what, we also destroyed a lot of documents so we have very little to show you if you want to know if you want to know specifically which one of our agents use the technology and who they use it on. We don't have that, but we're going to tell you it's real. And we we have experimented with it and it is effective and we do use it. That was in the 1970s. That wasn't in the 1990s. That was in the 70s. So if they could do that in the 1970s, why would a why would a doctor say they couldn't do it now? That's that's what I don't get. Yeah, man, I, it, it's, let's just say technology back then, a computer was the size of what, like, a, like a, 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 a door, a house, and the way technology has evolved. But no, man, I, I didn't hear anything like that. And it, that, and that, and no, 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 but listen, 
they had been doing that since the 50s. The only reason why it came out in the 70s is because Congress put them on the floor. They didn't, they didn't invent this stuff in the, in the 70s. They had this stuff since the 50s. But the only reason why it came out in the 70s is because the United States government put, put them on the, uh, the United States government made them talk about it in a congressional hearing. And they said, yeah, we got it. So, you know, right. So if they could do it, if they were doing it, you know, I mean, before, I mean, my God, they were doing this. My, my mother is like, well, hold on, my mother's like 62, 63. So, so if they were doing this, they were doing this, you know, when she was born, that was, she, that was like 53. And so I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he tells me that shit can't even happen in Star Trek. And like I talk to him, it's it's hard. Like, I mean, it's hard even uh, talking with you right now because I know, not out of paranoia, but, but well, a little bit to be honest. I, mean, I know I'm being watched and I'm being listened to. And when, like, I, you know, my focus kind of starts to drift. Like, I start hearing, like, stuff is, oh, you're psycho, you're psycho, or, you know, he's a. Uh, Mm -hmm. so even right now as even right now as you speak to me you're saying you're being you're being targeted by through the gang stalking program with technology that's telling you that's giving you subliminal thought like communicating to your mind thoughts that's what you're saying yeah communicating to my mind there's a connection with the drugs I mean the, the, the prescribed drugs that a doctor gives you do you think you're more susceptible to this influence because of the drugs Now they, they, I'm not my, I, you know, I was, I, I've been drug, I've had my food drug when I went out to eat. Um, nothing, nothing the gang stalking program had to offer could disconnect me. It always made me 110 percent better, no matter what. And when I was going out to eat in Phoenix, they started drugging my food then because they were like, man, this guy, we can't do nothing to him. He's happy. He, he's out communicating with people. He's having the time of his life. There's nothing we can literally do. Let's drug his food. And so. They drugged my food, and even when they drugged my food, I got ten times more active. I came back here to I can't I live in North Shores, Michigan. I came back here. They they realized that they realized oh just drug his food, just drug his food. You go to eat. They drug my food. I kicked it into high gear, man. Went out, started jump roping, passing out flyers. Why I was high on the drug? Why I was high on the drug, dude? Dude, I'm not playing with you. Why I was high on the drug? I was out there bombing them with flyers, everything, just letting them know what's up, telling them who I am. I, I go to I go over to somebody's house, the gang stalking program. They set up shop. They like to set up shop and, and pay everybody off and get everybody involved in it. I just I, so when I go to a new area, I just I just immediately I just start chopping it up with people. I just let them know my name, Jamil Rawls. I'm famous. Google me. You know, did a bunch of interviews in Hollywood. Got set up to get killed by the by the elites of the of the of the, of the world, secret societies. Beat that 110 percent, no matter what. I'm the only person world to beat gang stalking. Just went through that year of that. Beat that. Now I'm out here telling people how they can beat it, grinding through it. You know what I mean? And and before before I know it, dude, I'll have more influence over a neighborhood than the uh, than the gang stalking people. If they're still gang stalking me, I'll still have more influence over them. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Uh, that's too much, dude. It, it's the counter opposite with me. I mean, it, kind of, it makes me vulnerable to the point where like they they like remind me like oh like you're targeted, you're targeted, or like you know. Dude, dude, you're targeted. I'm gonna tell you right now, man. You, the only reason you're talking to me is because you're targeted for success. That's it. 
you're you're t you're targeted. You're talking to the only person in the world. I'm telling you, dude, this program is gonna make you a better person. You're gonna grind through this, man. Whatever they. Well, Yeah, man, you, you just got to keep grinding. That harassment's your, that harassment, the more you get harassed, the more you know you're breaking out of it, man. Like with me, they, like with me, dude, they, they tried everything on me. I, I, I love the gang stalking program. That may sound shocking to you, but I'm telling you, man, the gang stalking program has made me 110% successful no matter what. Listen to this, man. I never kissed a girl's hand in my life. After being put in the gang stalking program, Dude, I go out, I'd be out there kissing girls' hands, you know, flirting with them, blowing kisses at them and stuff, talking to them. You know, if I if I get close to them, and I, I, if I can game one of them, you know what I mean? I'd be holding their hands, walking down the street and stuff like that. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, man, the game stalking program made me more social. I, get, I wave at cars. If I go out walking around on the streets, especially if I leave my neighborhood, I'll, I'll be waving at, like, the area I live in, I don't really get too active with it. But once I leave, I, man, I'll be out there. I, I'm a beast, dog. I just let loose. I'll be out there waiting. I'm serious, man. I'm serious. I'm serious, man. You're gonna once you're gonna you're gonna have it like that too. What? If you keep talking to me, man, you're gonna beat the program 110 percent no matter what. And that's why they're targeting you. Have, have does it seem like they got more wor worse on you? Stuff. You said when you wake up, you got you, they were attacking you at night or something with the electronical yeah. stuff. this i went to a funeral and they had guess what they had the, this is a broad daylight right they had the lights on the hearse you know how you know how i was talking about the gang stalkers with me they use lights on and stuff in broad daylight they had the lights on the hearse at the funeral i went to <laughs> no, I got, the program don't be playing man the program don't be playing then then they then they heard me then, then they, then they had this, they had this fine ass light skinned black chick man walking down the aisle with me. You, you should, you should have saw her fat her ass was at the funeral. And so I'm, I'm. What were you, what were you doing at the funeral? No, oh, it was a funeral I was attending. And yeah, I mean, they actually were. That's horrible. Dude, they had the hearse. They had the lights on the hearse, and they had a girl walk following me everywhere, and I didn't know her. And she was fine as hell, man. She she was so damn fine, dog. And she was following me everywhere. And because she was following me everywhere, 
Everybody was lo- everybody was just looking at me like like damn who is that that's you know like that's his wife or something like that she was she was following me everywhere fine as hell I was like that that's the glory I get out of the program though dog that's that's the glory I get you know how we do it <laughs> huh the, hey, hey hey it's cool though like I got I got sometimes I talk to this chick on the phone and you can, I can hear I can hear my voice uh, she cannot hear it at her end but on my end. They got it so I can hear my voice echoing, and so so. That's what mine does too. Right, 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 right. So I can like by talking, especially if I got on speakerphone, I can say I'll say like oh, and it'll come back like oh, and so I'll be on there talking to her and stuff like that. And I can hear my. It's like I get happy about it because it's like special effects. I'm like hell yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the program, hey, the program, you laying it down, dog. That's, a, yeah, that's, what, that's what I have. Doug, you gotta rewrite your story, dude. You gotta rewrite your story. You gotta be like, you gotta, you gotta be, like, you, you gotta be like, you gotta come out, you dog. You gotta come out and, and start and start telling people, man. You gotta be like, I'm a mod. You gotta be like, I'm a modern medical miracle. I'm psychic, and I opened up my pineal gland to the third dimension, and now I can hear voices from people who need my help. And you know what I mean? Turn yourself into like a superhero. That's what I'd be doing. I'd be laying it down. I wish I had it like that. I'd be out there. Well, like I, was the, I was at the record store, man. I saw a couple of your videos. And I was in the record store. And I, I just kept saying to myself in my head. And I kept like, I kept, I thought I got crazy. But like, you know what? I'm kidding. And like, you know, just, you know, seeing what kind of reactions. And, I, you know, I did get tell a little bit the store. But it was such a big store that, like, I mean, you it was obvious he saw somebody kind of watching you, but, uh, you know, I just, I just kept saying, I'm famous, you know, in my head. And, you, you uh, got, yeah. you got to tell him, you got to tell him. See, the thing about that is some people will hear you say that and they'll be like, man, what, what are you famous for? But other people will be tripping. They're like, for real, you're famous? I'm like, yeah, why do you think you got paid to follow me, dog? You know who I am? Google me. You know what I mean? I just, I just pretend like it's real. I just be like, I'm famous. Famous. And I'd be, you know what I'm saying? And they like, like, especially, I'd be having so much energy with it too. I'd be like, I'm famous. I'm famous. <laughs> you gotta do, I'd be running it on the females. Dog. I'm like, I'm famous. I'm famous. I say it, they'd be like, for real? For real? For real? Like that. I'm like, yeah, get my number now. Where you got the opportunity. Don't you know I'm famous? Damn it. <laughs> That's how you gotta be, man. You just gotta run it, run it down on them. I just be like, you know, I just tell him, say, I'm gonna, you know, just tell him for the time being, I'm, you know, only person with a beat gang style, I'm, I'm in a league of my own, you know, and and they be like, I'm like, damn, when they hear it, they get so blown away, you know, what I mean, you just gotta rewrite your story, you know. Uh, no, I know, I know it, man. Like I, I, I told my uh, ex girlfriend, I, I did for a long time it's in New York about you know targeting individuals. Like, oh, I want to be targeted too. She was like, uh, can I just, I just stop to work? opinion do you think do you do you think it would ever go, like if you just didn't if you just stopped caring about it and just went on your life do you think it would ever go away or do you think they'll always try to be there in your life uh at the moment i think it's gonna be here for a while because i uh the mimicking you know i i get that uh more than i get the stalking when i, when I get the stalking it's more of not harassment, it's more of a like, on the insult side. It's, a, it's about personal information that only I would know about in my own private home. You know, I I don't want it to go away with me because I need I actually need it because I'm setting up training courses for like for people who aren't being gang stalked and who don't know what it is. If they follow me, then they'll get to experience it. See what I'm saying? I'll get to show them all the stuff about it, and so I'm setting up training courses for people. Who want to learn how to get through um, 
agitation and stuff like that and learn from my experience. Or they want to learn how to be able to just beat gang stalking in case it does happen to them. You know what I mean? And so, right. I mean, it's heavily right. it's heavily financed. Dude. They hire a lot of people to do it. So hell, I'm gonna use it as a I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it as an opportunity, and I'm setting up, you know, the training course. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, like I, huh? Like I feel like they, I feel like, like my self conscious mind, like your self conscious mind isn't always right. And when they put stuff in it constantly, I mean, it does honestly, it does honestly kind of jar you. But like, it's kind of like just getting smacked in the lip. You take it, you just kind of keep going with it. Oh yeah. Do you, uh, what about the females? Have they thrown those fucking model chicks at you? Excuse my language. Uh, one, one time when uh, we were at the store, there was a girl on peak uh, that, that was strolling by, but she, she had a baby and then walking in, like, uh, you know, you would see groups of girls that were, you know, good looking and, like, you know, that would pass by. They wouldn't say anything, but they would, you know, silently pass by. But it, it's more or less when I'm in, uh, uh, I mean, that could be a coincidence, but it's it more or less wherever I go, like the book section or the electronics or, you know, uh, any part of the store, it's like there'll be somebody by the aisle kind of idling, doing nothing, or there'll be somebody on the other side mimicking my self-conscious thoughts. Man, they had a group. They had a group of girls. Man, they were so damn fine. They were at this mall. This was a while back, and I, the gang stalking program, thought I was gonna like, go to punk out and not say nothing to them. And I just walked up to them. I was, I was, I was like, I was like, you, you ladies have greatness within you. You ladies have greatness within you. And they just start. They got all happy and just started laughing and stuff and like, like snickering amongst each other and stuff like that. And then they were like, they were like walking away. And as they were walking away, one of, one of them, one of them, one of them looked back at me. And she was fine as hell, and I was just, I just know, I just know if it hadn't been for the gang stalking program, boy, I would have pulled me one of them. You know what I mean? I would have pulled me. See, dog, I live at my mother's house, and I, I'm not able to for a long time. It's, it's been a situation where I'm not able to bring females back here, and so when I go out, you know, I always went far away from my neighborhood to find females and then take them somewhere else. I go back to their place with them, but now I'm getting to the point to where you know, I, like I said, even my own mother gang stalking. So I don't care. I just tell people as it is. I don't have a car. Uh, I, I'm living at my mother's house. Um, you know, when I I do odd jobs like mow grass, do roofing. Uh, you know, help people stuff from time to time. You know, what I'm saying what I want. You know, but what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring out the greatness with you. I'm the only person who'll ever beat gang stalking. Jamil Rawls. Explain to him who I am. You know, I'm a, I'm a league of my own worldwide. I just I just bring the rap down on him, man. And I, I bring it. You know, what I'm saying I, I bring him. You know, I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get me a fine one. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get boy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get me a fine one. I'm gonna say gang stock program. Can you take her? That's what I'm gonna tell the gang stock and program. Take her. Can you take her? Can you pay her? She ain't going nowhere. Watch. You want me to tell the program to take take her. Take her. See if you can get her. She ain't gonna go nowhere. See what I'm saying? Uh, huh?
Because I'd be, I'd be, hit, I'd be trying to hitch, I'd be throwing up the hitchhiking sign. I'd be trying to get rides from them. Trying to get rides. Man, most of those people are scared, dog. They, they, they have people pretending like they were trying to hit me on the street. I was walking in front of their cars. Like, go ahead and hit me. That's just more glory to my story. If you're gonna do it, do it. They, they, so, they, they got, they got some scary cats. I make them stronger. They, they try to, they derive strength for me. I, I benefit the, the, the gang stalker. Well, that's just, that's the part I understand, and I mean, I'm not trying to be, like, a hard ass or anything, but it's like, sometimes I say, you know what, dude, let's see what the worst you can do, and like, you know, I'll be in the park and lot alone, or I'll be skateboarding alone, and it's just like, or like, I know my, I know for a fact that my neighbors are probably going to cross from me, in fact, they, mm. uh, their, their little uh, farmhouse they got, and uh, it's like, you know, what's what you going to do? And, like, it ends up being, you know, it's all filtered in your mind. Right. But, exactly. But, like, it, they can still insult you and put you down. So, like, through, like, I, I don't know, their electronic stuff, but, like, what is the worst you can actually do? Give me your worst. And they can't do anything. Or they have to. All they done is make my life better. I mean, I love the Gang Stalker program. It's made my life better, man. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for, too. I mean, it has made me more proactive. It's like, uh, you know, uh, doing stuff, getting out, uh, actually learning more stuff about my family, uh, you know, past, and my grandfather, everything. You know, I've just, I've become kind of closer with my family. I've stopped isolating. In a way, it's helped. Because, like, I have to tell people that I'm going through this, whether they think that, you know, crazy or not. And my mother's starting to finally understand and believe it after seeing that, that several videos and that MSNBC. And it's like, wow, you know, this stuff doesn't exist. Well, that's the positive thing of the program. For a long time when I was doing my conspiracies, my mother, she didn't know anything about conspiracies. And so she always thought I was just tripping. And then when I told her about... And then I then when I told her about the gang stalking stuff, she thought I was tripping. Then then they started paying her off, and so now she knows I'm not tripping. And plus, she buys me extra stuff. So, you know, I'm well, telling you. Yeah, she gets money from it or something. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's not so much that; it's just that she feels like guilty or something. But you know, I'm I'm glad because now she knows everything I said was real. Yeah, no, I mean, that's it. That's where I'm getting with with my. And uh, uh, she's starting to, uh, you know, she's starting to understand from the videos that I've seen. And I keep telling her, I'm like, Mom, I know, you know, about you just look out for coincidences, you know, like look out for what's happening. You know, we do get caught up. There, there is cars and random, like, stage shows. Uh, you know, uh, there was uh, another incident and some more of the homebody I walked out of my yard and uh somebody let a dog off the lady and they could keep running at my uh fence and like barking and kind of biting and it was in the middle of the dark you know and then it and then it went away it was just you know it's just like stupid scare tactics that it's like it, it's like really are you guys gonna go that low like do you i i just I, sometimes i don't understand why people do this to other people and especially People, when people do that gang stalk, they start looking weird, man. Like, they start looking like, like robotic. It's a weird, it's hard to explain it. They don't look like people anymore. They start looking like, you know, robots or something. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a very, like, it's very, like, out of the normal. It's like they, like, they'll walk by, and then, like, they'll walk by the house, like, and, like, slowly, and, like, another person will pass. And like for instance, like I was going to the I went to the bathroom and then like I, I was going so sick and I went to the bathroom and went when I got out of the bathroom I went outside to have a cigarette and these uh, these 
Recording for for like forty six minutes. I'm gonna put it on stop. All right. Yeah, that's cool. All right.